Have you ever heard someone say, just count 14 days after your period? That is when you believe. Well, that is not always true because every woman's body is different. And if you have ever tried to use this formula to calculate your fetal days and sick days, you might have realized that it doesn't always work. In this video, I'm going to show you a simple practical way to calculate your sick and fetal days. Hi, my name is Dr. Tekla. On this channel, we discuss everything women's health. If that sounds like something you'll be interested in, please subscribe to the channel. Now, before I explain this method of calculating your safe and fetal days, the first thing you need to know is how to count the length of your menstrual cycle. To count the length of your menstrual cycle, you start counting from the fourth day of your period. That is the day bleeding starts. You count from that day to the last day before your next period comes. So if in a month you saw your period on the first of that month, then the next time your period comes, it is on the 26th of that month. That means you have a 25-day cycle because from 1st to 25th, which is the last day before the next period came, it is 25 days. Or you have a 30-day cycle, meaning if you saw your period on the first of the month, the next time you should see your period is on the 31st of that month because when you count from 1st to 30th, which is the last day before the next period, it is 30 days. So that is the simple way of understanding how to count the length of your menstrual cycle. Now, if you have been keeping track of your cycle, you will know that the length of your menstrual cycle is not always constant from month to month. Let's assume you have a 30 day cycle. Some months it will actually be 30. Other months, 28 days, maybe 31 days, maybe even 32 days. So the reason for this is because ovulation day is not constant. Things like exercise, drugs, illness, changes in weight, and even travel can shift ovulation. That is why it is important to track your cycle over a long period of time, at least six months. When you do this, you'll be able to get your shortest cycle and your longest cycle because that is what you are going to use to calculate your safe days and your fetal days. Now, the example we are going to use in this video is this. If you have tracked your cycle for at least six months, and then you find out that your shortest cycle is 25 days, while your longest cycle is 29 days, we will use this method from World Health Organization. Instead of assuming your ovulation comes 14 days after a period, We'll use the data from your cycle. We'll subtract 18 from your shortest cycle and 11 from your longest cycle. So when we subtract 18 from 25, we'll get 7. And when we subtract 11 from 29, we'll get 18. What this means, 7 and 18, it means the 7 and the 18 of your cycle. It means that the 7 is the first day of your fetal window for your shortest cycle, while the 18 is the last day of the fetal window for your longest cycle. So if you're trying to get pregnant, this is the time to have unprotected sex to maximize your chances of getting pregnant. Why for your safe days, they will be the days before the seven and the days after the 18, which is day one to six, and then the 19 to when next you see your period. So to use this method, you just need to track your cycle for a long period of time at least six months so that you get your shortest and your longest cycle. You just need to subtract 18 from your shortest cycle and 11 from your longest cycle. Now, I need to make you understand that this method will only work if you have regular cycles, meaning your cycles don't change too much from month to month. If you have irregular cycles, like one month is 21 days, the next month is 35 days, this method won't work. For you if you use other forms of contraception like condoms pills and even implants if you are trying to avoid pregnancy so this is a simple way of calculating your safe days and your fetal days if you enjoyed watching this video if you learned something please like the video and consider subscribing to the channel for more health conversations like this